everyone to another comic multiverse commentary it's been much too long since we've done one of these and in fact this is a very special commentary not just for the movie that we're doing but this also marks i think a pretty pretty special pretty substantial point in the comic multiverse history this this is a bit of a reunion piece this is something that matt and i have wanted to do since last year we talked about this when we wanted to get our special guest in here obviously if you clicked the thumbnail you see it said special guest but you don't know who it is yet and that's because he's a man who i'm going to introduce to you right now it's tom everyone hey guys how you doing, Tom? It's been forever. For those who don't remember, or for those who might be brand new, Tom worked with us forever ago, back when we worked at Name Redacted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Seriously, guys. Uh, yeah, I've wanted Our to pleasure. do this for the longest time. Like, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, we, we love having you back. We love it. it. feels like old times, and I figure the only way we can make it more feel like old times is if we did a Power Rangers commentary, because we did these all the time back when we worked at Name Redacted. And for those of you who wonder <laughs> what Name Redacted is about, that's my riff on uh, Cultaholic when they all used to work for what culture, because that's my way of riffing on where we used to work. <laughs> I mean, we could just say they have the same initials as a Canadian broadcasting company. They surely, <laughs> surely. <laughs> to the old CBC, but uh, yes, everyone. Uh, I, I know people are probably thinking, like, really, a Power Rangers commentary now? Why now? Well, it makes sense because a our guest, uh, b they just dropped a bunch of uh, stuff for the new Beast Morphers, the next Power Rangers series, and uh, there's a bunch of talk now because Power Rangers got bought again. Yeah, Do again, not... it's play, playing playing musical chairs again. It really is. Do you know that I I think I only joined you for one Power Rangers commentary before, and it was for um that one episode they did where they brought in all the previous Power Rangers, and it was like this big crossover episode. Right, but, right, uh, yeah. I mean, I watched Mighty Morphin as a kid, and I I love the original Mighty Morphin movie with Ivan Ooze, but I think that's all I've seen, and even that goes back about fifteen years now. So, <laughs> okay. yeah, well, I'm they... probably the the least the least knowledgeable Power Rangers fan in history. Well, that's all right, because we're doing the Mighty Morphin era here, and even if you did know the Mighty Morphin era, as we'll discover, that doesn't matter because they change practically everything anyway. <laughs> but now we're getting ahead of ourselves. So, yes, if you have your copy of Power Rangers, what was the year? Uh, 2017 in front of you. The version that we're going to be doing our commentary over right now is two hours, three minutes, 58 seconds. So be sure to find one that uh, lines up with this one. I will count us down. And then when I count to three, we will press play. And when we do so, we'll all be synced. So you can watch at home. You can watch along with us. Get get your snacks, get your drinks, get your what have is. Yeah. And we're going to have a fun time as we always do. So, all right, my... Uh, I'm hovering over the start button right now, and we will start in uh, one, two, three. All right, so we press play. The logo is coming up now. Who made this one again? I totally forget. Uh, I wasn't it like like Seven's like oh, it's Lionsgate. oh Lionsgate? I thought right. it was like Seven like had like their own film division made for this film or something. They this... wanted to. Yeah. There was a lot of lofty goals that went into this movie that ended up <laughs> falling right down the toilet. Yeah. I I remember I wasn't even going to see this movie. I was being quite salty about it, and I had quite a protest, being like, man, I refuse to see this movie unless they, like, send me free tickets. And then guess what happened? I was in Victoria, and someone I knew won a radio contest, and they're like, hey, Julie, you like the Power Rangers? You want to see an early screening? I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, I did see this as cinema as well, and I remember not hating it. I haven't Sick. seen it since, though, so it's it's not been good enough that I've bothered going back and watching yeah, it again. Yeah. But I do my remember main... loving this intro, though. It, see, here's the thing. If I was to do a Power Ranger movie, I would do something more in line with this. I would focus on Zordon and Eltar and everything. I would do, like, a prequel to it, but they'd never fucking make that movie. No. Yeah. Did you guys ever see um, Adi Shankar's... Um, Power yes. Rangers mm -hmm. R-rated fan film. I mean, that as soon as I saw this intro, I was like, oh, they're, they're kind of doing it, that. 
<laughs> it really looks like that, and you remember that they really, uh, what is it, shat over Shankar's thing and tried to get it pulled down and everything. It's like, why are they being so weird about it? Oh, this is why, because they're literally <laughs> doing it. That's why. Yeah. I mean, there was a rumor, though, like, shortly after they released this, there was a rumor that Adi Shankar was actually going to be making an R-rated Power Rangers TV series. <laughs> but that that never fucking came to anything, did it? No, like, what- it's it's funny. I've had such a love hate with Shankar, where I saw that Power Ranger short, and I'm like, "What is this grim and gritty garbage?" And then like I saw his Castlevania thing, I'm like, "Oh, this is pretty cool." And then like I heard that his next project is he's doing like a documentary on Superman versus the KKK, that famous radio plan. I'm like, "God damn, all right." <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing that's great about him though is like he he makes fan films that are completely different to the source material. Oh yeah, and not yeah. in like a Zack Snyder type of a way. No, yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I really liked his R-rated Power Rangers thing. Yeah, he did so that really good get... Punisher thing as well. He also oh, that did was that. great with Ron Perlman as well as with the guy in the uh, the liquor store. Yeah. Oh, yeah, arguably the best one. Yeah. So, yeah, Rita is the Green Ranger in this one. Okay. <laughs> well, to be honest, it's been so long since I've watched Power Rangers... I, I didn't care. <laughs> Reinvent it as much as you like. Seriously. To, to, to me, it was like one of those, like, oh, and the Joker killed Batman's parents, huh? Right? We're just getting real lazy out of the gate, huh? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it feels like they didn't have, like, they didn't know what to do. Like, well, what do we do? Oh, she was a witch trapped on the moon. No, we'll trap her at the bottom of the ocean to make her the blue, uh, the Green Ranger. For some reason. And also, we're already future-proofing the franchise, because, like, oh, we gotta talk about the Zeo crystal already. It's like, Zeo comes next, damn it. <laughs> finish finish what's on your plate now before you start talking about Zeo. I mean, at least they were sort of hinting at the future of the franchise without, like, the amazing Spider-Man 2 or BVS-type uh, way of just <laughs> shoehorning in every reference possible. They tried. Also, here's the, here's our first introduction to Jason, everyone. How how do we meet him? Uh, by talking about possibly jerking off a barnyard animal. You know, <laughs> like Power Rangers did all the time. As you usually do. Uh, we I, I remember coming home from school in the 90s and just being, you know, so so tickle-pinked excited to see what Jason is going to jerk <laughs> off today on Power Rangers. I mean, surely it would be Billy, right? Yeah, uh, but I'm um, Tish. Actually, hey, I'm actually glad you mentioned that, Tom, because that's something we'll talk about later. Uh, the Power Rangers and their history of LGBT characters, because this movie technically has the first gay ranger, but not really, because they don't come out and say it, but they were really quick to take credit for it. Yeah. It really made me sad, though, when I found out that the actor that played the Blue Ranger on the original show was bullied on set. Yeah, like, yeah. Blue's always been my favorite color, color. Like, being a Superman fan, Blue has always been my favorite color. Mm-hmm. And hearing that he was sort of picked on on set made me sad, because he was my favorite Ranger growing up. I, I know. it's Well, because he was the most, like, the fan base. Like, hey, I'm a sensitive nerd. And plus, David Yost is just a really nice guy in real life, too. Mm-hmm. He really is. I met him at a few comms. Yeah, just a, just a sweet awesome. guy. I, I got starstruck actually in New York. I was uh, riding the coattails of people much more famous than me, and I got to go into the green room for a second. And he was there, and he was wearing like a beautifully tailored blue suit. And I'm like, oh, I see what you're doing. And I wanted <laughs> to say hello, but I got so shy and clammed up. And I'm like, damn it, I should have said hello. Shit. <laughs> It's a shame. I could tell when I met him at a con that he'd obviously been asked these really awkward questions all day because he declined an interview. But right. literally sitting next to him were Bulk and Skull. Yeah. And both of them agreed to an interview, even though the con organizers had told them not to. So that was awesome. That's cool. <laughs> so that's, that's the one complaint I had about this movie, actually, is there's no Bulk and Skull. Like, they're my two favorite characters from the show. Missed like opportunity. Really is. Look, I'll do it. I'll be bulk. Look, okay, fine. I will do it. I'll be the guy. Also, shocking thing about this movie, too, we spend way more time with the Rangers' parents and see way more of their home life than we ever did in the television show, which that's the one thing I kind of got to give this movie credit for because it's really the only thing you can do when you're trying to expand the plot from 22 minutes. They they, they decide to make Angel Grove an actual place. (laughs) Yeah, so just like a set dressing 
Although they can't decide what kind of place Angel Grove is, they're like, oh, is it a hard scrabble failed mining town? No, it's a hard scrabble failing fishing town in Maine. I'm like, well, you filmed it in Kamloops, Canada, so, you know. <laughs> All I can think, though, when I see the Red Ranger's father is he should have married Pam. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, if you like references like that, Tom, this high school, this is the same high school they filmed Smallville in. Is it really? Oh, yes, wow, it is. Really? It's fucking awesome. Also in Canada, holy shit! This this building doubles for so much. <laughs> Smallville just has connections to everything, though. It's it like really the does. like Luther's mansion was like the same mansion from the X Men movies. And... I've been there actually. That's Casaloma. I've been there. That's awesome. <laughs> they have weddings there. You can get married at Luther's mansion. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. Just hire like Michael Rosenbaum to like officiate the ceremony and all that. Oh, That'd well, now crazy. we got to do that. <laughs> and now Just we... like, if, if I give you an extra hundred bucks, will you shave your head? <laughs> <laughs> and, and now we enter what is known as the Breakfast Club portion of the movie, because, you know, when you're trying to make Power Rangers a property from the 90s, hip and trendy for kids in the teens, obviously what you do is you go back to a movie from the 80s. <laughs> it it's a movie. damn good movie. Though. The kids that, uh, that appeals to this movie have never seen before. <laughs> and have only heard yeah, about I... them. There's there's so much of that where it's like I see what you were doing, but like maybe you should have ran that past someone. Yeah, Breakfast Club's a good movie. We can all agree, but <laughs> see, I, I didn't see that movie for years, and then someone told me like Breakfast Club is to John Hughes what Clerks is to Kevin Smith. Mm-hmm. Like I immediately had to watch it because I was just like, oh wow, it's all dialogue and it's really funny. Like yeah, anyone who hasn't seen it, watch it. Hughes is a hell of a writer. He really was. Or oh, is I don't know if he's still working. I think he's That's dead. Right. I, I, I think he is, he is still dead? actually. Yeah, oh, I think so. Shit. Oops. Well, Rest hey, in hey, peace. hey Tom, at least at least we figured out he was dead, and you're not like me claiming Dean Cain is dead when he's not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Professor Zach Galifianakis beard. <laughs> you got detention between two ferns, kids. Oh yeah, I forgot. Kimberly's story in this yes this whole sexting revenge porn scandal which again just reeks to me of like all right how do we update these characters we hypercharge the action kimberly was popular so obviously for our new trendy movie we need to hypercharge that and have her be involved in like mean girls shit (laughs) oh no she's gonna cut the picture don't do that oh my heart Uh, as if it's not digital she can just print up another copy (laughs) yeah really see that doesn't work anymore i'll just put myself back in it then in the 90s that could have worked but not now that's see that's what i think this movie should have done and i stand firm on this that if they do another one and they're probably going to do another one because another uh place got the rights to it do a period piece you need to have a power rangers movie set in the 1990s that's the only way it works anymore yeah totally I mean, or, let's face it, 80s movies are sort of going out of fashion now, so it's only a matter of time before the 90s is the new popular oh, yeah. decade for film. Oh, yeah, there's a wave of uh, 90s nostalgia coming our way without a doubt. Or, And this is another thing I would have done, and in fact, they could have done it here. There was really no point in keeping the names from the classic show because they're really nothing like those characters. I think if they changed everybody's names, I actually probably would have been a little gentler to this one. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like make it so it's just, it's Power Rangers, but it's not like the TV show. It's a new, yeah, it's it's new it's season. its own thing in its own universe. And because every new season of Power Rangers was essentially a universe unto itself, except for all the crossovers, but that's where it gets a little hinky. <laughs> but also as well, if they were completely different characters, you could open it up to like having a cameo or two from the original cast. Yeah, like exactly. you could have like you could have like um, what's his name, the guy who played Tommy. Oh, Jason David Frank. Yeah, you could have him like be the gym teacher or something. That would have been cool. <laughs> we we do actually get cameos from him and Ashley Joe Johnson in this. Yeah. Oh shit, really? Oh yeah, in yeah, the, uh, like near the yeah. end, it, uh, it yeah, sticks out like a done. sore thumb. <laughs> which which apparently they had a much more subtle one when uh, they're in the diner screwing around. It would have flashed to them at a table and they would have both given a look like kids these days. <laughs> They would have had to change the story a bit, though. Like, this is Zordon's first team of rangers since that era. But, I mean, that would have been fine. 
just one rewrite of the script it's it's like many films it's like bvs one rewrite of the script could have made it a good movie oh, the God. same with this yeah you, you could have uh, crisis on infinite earth did and be like oh there's multiple power rangers teams throughout the multiverse that would have been great <laughs> That, that's a bit too high a concept people probably yeah. won't be able to grasp, gr grasp what the morphing grid is and whatnot yeah yeah oh man the morphing grid such a great concept that kyle higgins power rangers uh series so freaking awesome wouldn't it have been great though to see like um like the student counselors of the school be like bulk and skull like, oh. like bulk and oh. skull in suits as the student counselors would have been amazing That'd have been great. Are there the teachers running detention? <laughs> That'd be pretty great. It'd be perfect. And again, I don't think they'd ask for much. Oh, definitely not. Did I think did, they would have been more than happy to do it? I will say too, as far as casting in this film goes, at least they got a bunch of actors I'd never seen or heard of before. Did they ever go on to do anything else? These kids? I don't think I've seen them in anything else. Um, mm -hmm. the guy who plays Jason is in the second season of Stranger Things. Oh, is he really? Yeah, he's like that new kid. Uh, right, that's got, like, right. That's and, right. Okay, see, with his '80s hair, I couldn't tell. And the chick that plays Kimberly is the new Jasmine in that live-action Aladdin film. Oh shit! Really? Okay. All right, good for oh. them. They are, I think, like the only two that went on to do something. Oh wait, no, and um, uh, the guy who plays the Black Ranger was just recently Commander Merc in Aquaman. Oh shit! Oh shit! He was too. That we we almost did that this week, guys. We almost did an Aquaman spoiler cast, but I didn't think that was enough to fill up a whole show, and because I wanted to do this. <laughs> now, Is Zira... it just me though, of the guy that plays the Red Ranger? Doesn't he look more like the original Blue Ranger, like he facially? Really yeah, he, he kind of like, does. If they switched his role, like I would be fine with a black like Red Ranger. Well, supposedly, uh, what is it, when uh, Max Landis ooh, did a pass at this script, he actually had a whole thing he wanted to do where uh, the Pink Ranger and the Black Ranger actually had their colors switched. Huh. I mean, didn't that would have been fun. Didn't they do something like that in the comic recently? They did, actually. And I'm like, you know, that's that's a good way to meet that head on because it's like, yeah, well, why is, why is the Yellow Ranger yellow and why is the uh, Black guy the Black Ranger <laughs> In well, a modern thank parlance. Thankfully, they changed that, though, for the Ivan Ooze movie. Uh, it, it, it also got a little more fucked up, too, because it's like, hey, you know, uh, Jason David Frank, who played the Red Ranger for many years, you know, he's got like he's like half Native American, right? <laughs> <laughs> whew, whew. That was that was a while after, though, wasn't it? Like, he was oh, yeah, green like, and then white for a long time. Uh, he's been just about every color at this point. <laughs> Has he really? Oh, yeah, you he's tell Ivan. <laughs> You can tell I haven't watched it since Mighty yeah, Morphin. He was in like a bunch of like, I wouldn't say like the re most recent series, but like s series from like 2005 and whatnot. He's the one guy who keeps coming back as he was white, or no, he was green, then he was white, then he was the red Turbo Ranger for a bit. Uh, then I think he came back in a Dino Thunder and he was black. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's he's been just about every color under the sun. Now, I remember, too, when I reviewed this movie at first, this this character really grinded my gears, the new Blue Ranger, because it, it reeks of something that is so common in Hollywood screenwriting, where that is, oh, it's not enough for a character to be smart. They also need to be like they're from the Big Bang Theory. They need to be autistic on top of all of that. <laughs> yeah. Because no, apparently no one's ever met just a smart person. <laughs> yeah, they have to be quirky. Mm -hmm. which again you know i said that and i got very impassioned about it, only to have a couple fans write me who are autistic and who are on the spectrum and they're like yeah Julie, you think that pisses you off imagine how we feel that this is the only <laughs> representation we get and shit and i'm like ooh, ooh, okay fucking points for you sir it's either him or sheldon yeah and i'm like man i feel really bad for you that those are your only uh <laughs> only things that you get to see yourself on screen <laughs> Oh god, what was another funny joke? I can't, I, I can't claim ownership of this one, but it was so goddamn accurate when they said, uh, when it came to making these new Power Rangers, it's like they took a bunch of uh, quirky teen stuff, put it on a dartboard, and then just threw to make up the characters. So for the Yellow Ranger, we've got death metal yoga lesbian, and for the other guy, <laughs> we've got Asian trailer park dying mom, <laughs> black country music autistic. <laughs> 
And I'm like, yeah, wow, it really does seem like a word salad, doesn't it, <laughs> when you put it that way? I mean, it would work with a stronger script. Mm. Well, the best part of this movie, I think we can all agree, the two parts that actually work are the big Zord fight at the end, but also when they're all just sitting around the campfire talking and they're actually working on doing real character stuff. And I'm like, holy fuck, this came from a way better movie. Well, that, that's mm. the thing that, like, you compare those scenes to, like, all of these scenes and it doesn't make any sense like this is all like like serious mm -hmm. you know we're a gritty reboot stuff and then you get stuff at the end with like giant f monsters fighting in a, in a little town like mm. it doesn't make any sense. like it's from two different films and, and i'm glad you mentioned the little town thing matt because i think that's another truly hilarious thing about this movie where it's like oh angel grove is now a small town Really? Because in the show, it was always like a big city in California. Yeah, but it's a lot cheaper if we have monsters tromping around a small town than a big city. Look, there's no big cities in Canada. No, no, it's true. None at all. We it is we funny that you mentioned... <laughs> it's funny, though, that you mentioned the difference between the first and second half. Because it's, it's almost like the difference between The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. Um, but except it's all in one movie. It's also too. It's like I didn't even check. Like, how many writers did this have on? And I know if like Max Landis did a pass at it, I'm sure they it, did many passes at it. It had. I will Google it now. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Had six, and that includes yeah. the, like based on the Power Rangers created by. That sounds about right. That's that's also just a thing with modern day screenwriting for summer tent pole movies where it's like, all right, we need a ton of writers to do a ton of passes at this. Well, now it's not anybody's vision anymore. Yeah. According to IMDb, there's actually nine. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Two more ghost writers. Although many are just story by. But let's right. face it, like, one, two, three, four, four story by credits. And then the yeah. rest are like television series by and created by and all that stuff, screenplay by. It's it's funny too. I I was bagging on Max Landis there a minute ago. I remember when this movie came out. I'm like, man, somebody who wrote this really liked Chronicle because like the latter half of this, when they're learning their powers, is just straight up Chronicle. Only to be like, oh shit, Max Landis actually worked on this at one point. <laughs> the funny thing is, he's not even credited on IMDb, no, so it's not. actually ten. <laughs> Or more, who knows? I, don't oh, know. Yeah, this... I like both halves of this movie for totally different reasons. Mm. I, again, I, I watching it now, I'm a lot less angrier than I was when I went into it. I guess because <laughs> ultimately, it, it ultimately it meant nothing. So I feel like I feel more generous to the movie. It's like like beating on the simple kid. I don't want to do it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, you're, you're a big man, Joel. A uh, big bootin' uh, Power Rangers from 2017 <laughs> make you feel strong, make you feel big and strong. <laughs> as well, like it, it's 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 a sad state of affairs where this is actually a compliment, but at least it doesn't look cheap. No, like, no, they they threw money at this movie. Like, they did. But that's my biggest complaint about the more recent Power Ranger TV shows. Is like it's all these decades later, and they're still wearing fucking spandex. Seriously. Hey, I like the spandex. When we see the rock candy suits later. Also, again, we got to remember that Power Rangers has its roots in Toku Sentai from Japan, and that's mm. like a cultural thing. Still, I think after the original Mighty Morphin movie. I would have loved to have seen the later TV series like base the costume technology more on that because yeah. I love the look of their. Obviously, once they lose the suits and they become just basically just multicolored ninjas, mm -hmm. well, don't, I don't like it like, quite as much. I'm sure I saw a photo of like the most recent iteration. Oh, Beast Morphers, yes, where, and it's um, more armor. Yeah, no, the the costumes actually reminded me of the Flash. Yeah, very much mm -hmm. so. They're getting a lot more superhero. Uh, reference which which is really goddamn funny because the costumes when i first saw these i'm like oh my god they look like a team of multicolored iron mans <laughs> i might they're actually the, have to give the new show a watch then they're the, it's starting very soon i think beast morphers it's probably absolute garbage but yeah they, ha they yeah. haven't been great i mean 
what was it? Uh, like Dino Charge was actually fairly interesting because they there's so much turnover in the writers' room on that mm-hmm. show. Is the thing like every so often you'll get a writer who actually gives a shit and was actually a fan once upon a time. Yeah, and then I mean, a lot I'm of like... hey, cool. and then a, a lot of the other time it's just people where it's like this is a paycheck for me. It's kids TV. Who fucking cares? Yeah, I'm just I'm amazed that there's anyone that even wants to work on the show that wasn't originally a fan exactly that's what i feel especially because we're getting to the point now where we're so far removed from the mighty Morphin era that if you're an actor on that show or if you're a writer in that writer's room then you probably grew up with it yeah you know who absolutely Power Rangers yeah. Are. yeah it's like how doctor who for a few years like exactly. Russell t davis and stephen moffat both grew up loving the show as kids and like that's... they started yeah that's why their eras of the show are so well and I that's it's what... debatable yeah, people would debate. I, I'm not going to start a Doctor Who fight here. <laughs> I, I have no dogs in that fight. I mean, both their eras were better than the most recent season. I'll say that. I, uh, I actually think Power Rangers could really benefit from someone just Doctor Whoing the shit out of it, actually. Oh, totally. But if Stephen Moffat was to, or Russell T. Davis were to like announce they're going to take over show running Power Rangers, <laughs> I'd be like immediately in. It's just like, Fucking yes, I am. Joke. I will watch that day one. I think we all would. I think someone should Doctor Who would like have someone come out and go, yes, I am a fan. I watched all of it. I want to make this new series as cool to people our age as it was when we were watching it as kids. But that costs money. That costs money. Because, like, here's the thing, too. Toku Sentai in Japan is a lot more all ages focused. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yes, this, too. I forgot about this. They're going to crash a second car. This movie is obsessed with crashing cars. It crashes, like, several cars. I think it's that they reach a certain number of pages in the script. So it's like, right, we need an action scene here. <laughs> Throw in a car chase also too we forgot to mention this as well there's there's a big battle in this movie that takes place around the quarry there's a lot of stuff in this angel grove built around the quarry because how many goddamn quarry fights did we have i feel like that 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 is like like a cheeky reference to the show how it just kept kept being in like that quarry and everything so Uh, it's like i was sent the movie in like part of a like a a failed mine uh, if it's not intentional it really fucking should be (laughs) it, it definitely is like Doctor Who, the exact same thing. Like a lot of the classic Who was set in a quarry because it was easy to make look like an alien planet. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And then in the later seasons, it was just like, why is every other planet we visit a quarry? <laughs> and I mean, I guess too, with all these car crashes, statistically, if you're a young person, you're more likely to die in a car crash than anywhere <laughs> else. That is true. <laughs> How do we ra- ra- uh, rank up the stakes for this one? I know. Let's keep putting them in dangerous cars. <laughs> How did he land on the top of that car without just being thrown and killed? Because he's just that good. <laughs> but even if he grabbed on, like he would have just like broken both of his wrists. Maybe he's ripped just... his hands off entirely. Because he's a teenager with attitude. Also, they picked up the magic rock, so maybe the magic rock let him do that's, it. That's true. Yeah, they're not just power coins anymore. They're like dinosaur fossil coins. <laughs> they give you special abilities even when you're not even a Power Ranger. <laughs> yeah, because then we don't have to spend a lot of money uh, making the CGI suits, which again, to give spandex its due, you don't have to do it in a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they didn't have to do it in a computer for the original Mighty Morphin. I still think those suits, I mean, they're not fantastic, but they hold up pretty well. They're really solid designs. They're some of the better ones, for sure. Yeah, Brian Spicer, the director of the original movie, like he did a decent job with the suits and stuff. There's, there's a real problem with modern Power Rangers suits where it's just like, oh, that's that's way too busy. You over-designed the fuck out of that. <laughs> there there was a like... good sort of medium struck with the original mm. film. Yeah, they, they just... I don't know what what's wrong with like modern like designers, but they have to redesign everything and make it so busy. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's all '90s image comics. I'm talking to superheroes being related to Power Rangers, I'd probably be like remiss if I didn't at least mention that Brian Spicer, the director of the original Ivan Ooze movie, started off directing episodes of the live-action Superboy TV series. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> he directed some of my favorite episodes, in fact. 
Also, what are the odds of this? You dig up the zombified corpse of Rita at the exact same time your kids find the power coin. That's really fucking convenient. <laughs> what, what it's I... like how they found Ivan Ooze buried under the same construction yard that the Power Rangers um, landed in, or that Bulk so Skull happy. rather landed in. Well, yep. What I don't in understand, though, is that, like, so she fell into the ocean, what, the, the Cryozoic period, which is like millions of years in the past she mm -hmm. yeah. she would be like buried under like bedrock and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff not just like floating through the ocean or like floating at a point where like mm -hmm. a net could just pick her up yeah but she just so happens to find was... her way to this very specific town where specific things are happening I mean, the, they could have had a entire scene... land masses have moved in that time they, yep they could have had a scene where like when they crash the car you see you know how that their crystals sort of activated Hers mm -hmm. activates as well and sort of frees her from like the the rock or something. Yep. Yeah, that would make more sense. Just so like much. suddenly she's alive, she blasts her way out in like beam of green light or something. But also we need to keep Jason's dad a part of this movie because Jason's dad will actually be kind of important later. <laughs> I wonder if these are the same CG abs on the Red Ranger that uh, Nicolas Cage used in Ghost Rider. <laughs> it's the exact same the effect. They just yes. like pasted it on. <laughs> Now, you mentioned the Amazing Spider-Man there, Tom. Again, with the Destroy the Bathroom montage, how many times are we going to be forced to watch in a superhero origin story the Destroy the Bathroom montage? I mean, it started with X-Men Origins Wolverine. Yep. <laughs> I am I mean, that, was, that was surely a good indicator of how the Amazing Spider-Man franchise was going to go. If they're ripping mm. off a scene from X-Men Origins Wolverine... Yeah. Yeah, they they clearly don't have any decent ideas. <laughs> also, why was this bully kid not Bulk or Skull? Yeah, it, like, isn't it's isn't kind of he in weird. the credits or something? I don't think they ever say his name. I mean, make him Skull. It is kind and of, and then weird. just have like, like oh, his fat friend come along and yeah, we have a villain in a Power Rangers film. Oh, we'll make it Bulk or Skull. No, 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 we'll make it some random ginger kid, some ginger nutter, as they would say at Hot Fuzz. Hell, they could just put like a skull on his t-shirt and that would be enough of a reference <laughs> people would just, get it there you go just give him sid's t-shirt from toy story yeah hey, i've hey, got go. i've got subs on that guy's name was wallace oh uh, well, what a wasted opportunity we we all know skull's name is eugene skullovich <laughs> <laughs> so i, mean, I don't even know that skull was actually part of his real name yep. i just figured they were nicknames yeah, because they were cool punk kids from the 90s, and that's what you did. He's popular now because he assaulted someone. Well, I mean, obviously <laughs> assault makes you popular. <laughs> I think, though, if a bully punched you in the face and somehow knocked themselves out, you would become pretty popular. <laughs> yeah, but don't fuck with that shit. Like, like, seriously, like, they punched him and, like, he got knocked out without even throwing a punch? That's amazing. You are impressive. Be, be <laughs> impressive. They ask how we did it. Just say I did it with math because I'm autistic genius. Yeah, I guess I I rain manned this one. <laughs> just like what? Brainy in uh, Supergirl this season, how he beat the guy using physics. Also, revenge porn girl is talking to you now, so you must be popular. <laughs> <laughs> By our powers combined. <laughs> and now they're just, yeah. They, they, they. I... When, when, when those, when the crystals, uh, like levitated, they should have just cut to like a lunch lady who just like doesn't seem very impressed by it. <laughs> that could also... have gone a lot worse as well. Like some of those students could have got like third degree burns or something. Oh yeah, a lot of. So thank, thank God, none of them were touching <laughs> the counter when that happened, since it melted like their plastic cups in seconds. You gotta supercharge the action. They're not just regular Power Rangers. They're super mega Power Rangers. So much power. <laughs> the Power Rangers turbo. To the max. <laughs> <laughs> uh. none, of, none of you guys are Power Rangers. We're spending a lot of time on adults with problems, not teens with attitude. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, though. I do love both halves of this movie, even though they're completely different. Oh, it's, yeah. it's the same as how I like um, Kevin Smith's Tusk. But that, that movie is like three different movies put together, and I like each third of the movie 
for completely different reasons. I've never seen it actually. <clears throat> it's it's not a great whole, but each third I like. I, I like each third a lot for completely different reasons. It's just very strange how it's put together. Yeah, what what do I know? I love Death to Smoochie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie what? about a podcaster, so you should check it out. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's <laughs> just for that. How so, many other podcast movies are made? That, that when there's that shitty sitcom with Zach Braff. <laughs> Did you guys oh, see that? Oh God, yeah. I stopped in the pilot as soon as Zach Braff was like, I need to find a millionaire investor to like fund my podcast because I need to hire a studio and book all this like studio equipment and all this. It's like, dude, you need a fucking laptop and a microphone. Yeah. Oh, that's, that, that's <laughs> comedy right there. I need a million dollar investor. Yeah. I still can't get over how stupid that was. No wonder the show got cancelled after one season. It's just, you know, it's like 50, 50 year old, like millionaire writers trying to write for like the new generation and the technology they don't understand. Oh, they all came there for no reason whatsoever. The, the power called them. And she can climb up a wall with CGI. Because she has the power of the tiger inside her, don't you know? I laughed when people said that The Force Awakens relied a lot on coincidence. Mm. I just said it was mostly down to destiny, but this film really does rely yeah, yeah. a lot on coincidence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. M <laughs> Motherfucker. You don't know coincidence <laughs> until you've watched this. Go, go watch Power Rangers 2017. Write me an essay and come back on coincidence. I mean, I enjoy this movie, but next to it, Force Awakens is a masterpiece. I like Force Awakens. I know. I, again, not to not, not to derail talking about Star Wars. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> I even like. I still like the Last Jedi as well. Same. Mm. At least it tried to do something different. Exactly. It safe. Oh, Star Wars fans are hard to please. I should know. I am one. It needs to be exactly how I remember it, but also surprise me. But don't surprise me too much, or I'll be angry. <laughs> it is amazing how quickly people forgave the prequels, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, almost overnight. <laughs> It'll happen again once there's a new series. People will forgive oh, oh. the, pre the, pre uh, the sequel series. And that's why another reason I can't understand people being so mad at Star Wars. It's like, guys, guys, we're going to get new series. We're going to get new trilogies and everything. You'll have time to be angry about other things. <laughs> And now, now we're in the chronicle portion. <laughs> Come on, Billy. Use your bazinga brain to get over here. <laughs> also, too, oh, I'm too autistic to do anything. Really? You, you seem to get social cues. You seem to be getting by just fine. Plus, he's just seen that it's entirely possible because his four friends all just did the exact <laughs> same uh, thing. It's not like he's, like, the first one to go. No, not it at all. It would be funny if, like, everyone gets that power except him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Matrix when Neo falls when he can't jump the buildings <laughs> I mean he kind of can't do it <laughs> it's probably because he didn't believe in himself <laughs> only if your heart is pure and you believe <laughs> oh, I do think no. this is my favourite portion of the movie though the, the chronicle portion <laughs> it's the most fun yeah it's serious but they're, they they're, they're having fun with it which i, mean, I, I like, appreciate yeah i like the last third of the movie but there was one specific point where i have a major gripe with it but uh i'll mention that when we get to it i i thought i'd be way more like fire and brimstone but i'm actually just sitting watching it again because there's a lot i forget yeah no i haven't <laughs> i haven't seen this since it originally came out so same same yeah i saw it last in actually in cinema same, right here. <laughs> this is very clearly, obviously, a trap. She wants to push you down and, uh -huh. and kill you and finish the suicide pact. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? This is easily a trap, but I'll believe you anyway because I desperately want to belong. <laughs> now, imagine if they missed... <laughs> That's not very, 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 very like small fissure there. <laughs> yeah. 
They could have very easily just missed entirely and just cracked their head open. <laughs> well, then the cops come and, like you said, Matt, they'll be right in the obituary. Strange teen suicide <laughs> pact in Angel Grove. <laughs> That's assuming they ever find them. Yeah, really. There's a UFO under this water. Like, that's not been discovered. (laughs) Yeah, it's a mining town and they never dug in the direction of the secret uh, UFO. Yeah, isn't that convenient? (laughs) Now, now I know I've mentioned this before, but did you know the original uh, command center in Power Rangers? That's a Jewish temple in California? Yes, yes. Like the Called like the... Yeah, it's called, like, the Temple of the Voice. So, I mean, I think if they ever reboot Power Rangers, they need to film at another Jewish temple, I do believe. <laughs> I mean, I was kind of sad that that temple didn't appear in this movie because it was just an iconic design. Very much. Uh, even even if you just show it, like, as it is, like, one of the characters happens to be Jewish and they go to a service at that place. Oh, Splash. Come on, guys, show your visual chops. This is going to be on your demo reel. This is probably the best visual moment, or the best visual storytelling moment mm. of the film. And it's such a simple thing that they did as well. Yeah, with the reflections. What? This is why I couldn't be a Power Ranger. Hey, we're all diving down below to see the, you know, reflective portal thing. Nah, sorry, I'm not going down. I don't want to get water in my ears. <laughs> yeah. I'm you... amazed. <laughs> I'm amazed they didn't actually take the time to edit out the bubbles because it does sort of show how they did it because they're all floating towards the surface. Yeah, they just like like turn the camera upside down, basically. <laughs> yeah. It, you guys much more knowledgeable on film craft than I am. <laughs> to, to me, it's all witchcraft. How are they doing that? How are they I mean, breathing under the water like that? I mean, I'm pretty sure when they did Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, they edited out the air mm. bubbles. Yeah, that's that right. They did. Yeah. That also had a big underwater scene. <laughs> Also, too, no one had really long uh, hair or really long beards that interfered with some of the underwater scenes. <laughs> Still, it, it, it was effective. Oh, yeah. I, I do like that moment. It was, it was well put together. Until yeah, the terrible CG water filter that looks like it was <laughs> done in iMovie. Right there. Geez, for people who come to listen to us eviscerate films and everything, sorry, we're actually being pretty complimentary about Power Rangers 2017. <laughs> I mean, credit where credit's due. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I guess a lot happened in 2018 for us to be like, you know what, this ain't too bad. I think we'll probably start shitting on it once Reader actually shows up. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> I mean, this movie did a lot wrong. Uh, yeah. I'd feel bad if I didn't at least acknowledge the few things it did right. What if the command center was just a down spacecraft? And what if the Fortress of Solitude was also just a down spacecraft? And what if that down <laughs> spacecraft looked like a, a mismatch of CGI? Like, you can't tell what's what. It looks like it's from a Transformers movie. Hmm. Which, oh man, speaking of Transformers, this movie tries to throw shade at Transformers near the end, and I'm like, really, guys? I mean, Transformers isn't any better. (laughs) No, it isn't. I just think it's like, really, this is pot calling the kettle black. (laughs) It's no better, it's no worse. (laughs) They're on the same level. It's like people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. And also the marketing of this movie, they really, really wanted that Transformers fan base. They were really hoping those fans would show up in droves and they did not. <laughs> no, this movie like bombed hard. Yeah, it did. And the director was still like, no, nah, man, I got a six movie plan for Power Rangers. I'm like, that's adorable. And the funny thing is, this is the last movie that, that director did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he still got that six movie plan in his drawer. I mean, people thought Fan Stick was going to be the last movie Josh Trank ever did, but yeah. he's made he's made another film with Tom Hardy that's coming out next year. So yeah, but this, the director of this actually like like had like the last credit in his IMDb is this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure he'll direct something for Netflix or streaming. <laughs> Maybe Netflix I mean... will buy the series and. <laughs> Yeah. 
I mean, this film, obviously there is a lot of CG going on right here, but at least they built some of the set. It's, yes. At least it's not all green screen. Mm. Which I, I appreciate. appreciate that. That's that's yeah. becoming a real pet peeve of mine. There's been like several big summer blockbusters I've seen this year where the big finale has been nothing but computer generated images. There's nothing real and nothing to latch onto, and I feel like I'm watching a goddamn video game. Yeah. Mm. Unless, unless you're Disney with Marvel, like you can't really get away with that. <laughs> no, you can't. No, and the technology's not there. Hey, Bill Hader, I like you, Bill Hader. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about Alpha. Is it bad that I spent the first half of the movie with Alpha thinking it was actually Patton Oswald? <laughs> it sounds like Bill Hader doing a Patton Oswald impression. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, I wonder how that's got to make you feel as an actor. All right, you remember the uh, annoying effeminate robot that was no one's favorite from Power Rangers? Yeah, well, we want you to be that effeminate robot that was nobody's favorite. <laughs> okay. And make it sound like an entirely different comedian. <laughs> Maybe maybe if I make my voice sound different enough, they'll not think it's me. <laughs> I think when this really? when this movie came out, I oh know that would have been a couple of years ago. Like Bill Hader did like a lot of like voice roles like this for movies. He did in the like he did yeah. one for like Star Trek. This uh, there was one other one I can't remember what it was. I mean, he Star was the voice of BB-8 in Force Awakens. Mm. Was he really? Yeah. Huh. I did Obviously not edited with computers and shit, but right. yeah, he he was the primary voice artist for BB-8. I, I can kind of hear it. I, I remember the night Bill Hader and uh, Andy Sandberg both appeared for their very first episodes of Saturday Night Live. They premiered at the same time. Cool. Yeah, and had very different career paths. Yeah. I mean, both of them have gone on to great things, though. Like, Brooklyn yeah. Nine-Nine is amazing. And Did you guys watch Barry? I did, yes. That was a really good show. Loved Barry. Can't wait oh, for season two. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I watched the first episode. But yes, where he plays like a hitman and everything, and mm -hmm. he's showing his dramatic chops. Yes, yes, Barry. Yeah, holy shit. Yeah, good, good, good one, guys. Such a good show, seriously. I always thought he had more depth to him, that he had, like, a sadness to him. He, he almost has, like, a Michael Shannon, I have a quiet intensity about me. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, Barry is kind of like a comedic Dexter. Mm. And hopefully it won't get worse as the series go on. <laughs> like Dexter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that got worse and worse, and then season four was just amazing, and then it got worse and worse and worse. <laughs> it's rare for shows to do that, to be like, hey, it came back for a minute. Yeah. Did you guys ever read the Dexter books? I no, I didn't often. actually. Oh, it's so yeah. much better than the it, show. Is, don't the know don't the books imply book. don't the books imply that his dark passenger is like an alien or some shit? It's uh yeah the third the third and fourth books kind of go off the rails. The third one reveals that the dark passenger is connected to the ancient Egyptian god of death called <laughs> Moloch. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's kind of strange. And then like the fourth one was like right around the Twilight craze, so he fights a gang of vampires. <laughs> well, they're not vampires. They're vampire like Wannabe. wannabes. <laughs> yeah. Why it's like a vampire of, why guy that owns this in the show. Nightclub. This would have made the show so much better. <laughs> also, too, hey Zordon appearing via the same effect as the Super Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> And the same effect used in, like, Man of Steel for Kryptonian tech. Yeah. Well, you see, Eltar was actually the next planet over from Krypton. They were neighbors. You didn't know that. I mean, Zordon's face literally is the same tech that, like, they have on Krypton that Superman's mother, Lara, talks to jor on. Like, <laughs> you know, the, the Eltarians were always telling the Kryptonians to turn down that music. Neither one of them realized that actually a TV screen is a lot better. <laughs> now, do we, do we want to talk about Brian Cranston's uh, lineage in in in, in oh, we Power Rangers? Oh, we have to. We have to. Oh yeah. So this isn't his first role in a Power Rangers film no. or, or show. <laughs> no. He, as with most working actors in LA in the early '90s, uh, provided voices for Power Rangers monsters. I think he's the Snizzard and a few other guys from the early season. And in fact, he was such good friends with the people in the recording booth and the writers. Billy Cranston, the Blue Ranger, is called Billy Cranston because of him, Brian Cranston. Yeah. Yeah. 
which I think is pretty freaking dope that he comes back all this time later. Especially since he wasn't even credited for all of his roles in the original show. Like, he would do, no. like, random parts as well. Most of the actors weren't credited back then, which is a real shame. I I will say about his performance, though, I like he's not being, like, the wise, uh, helpful, inspiring Master Splinter or Yoda. He just sounds really frustrated and exacerbated the whole time. Oh, you fucking kids. I mean, at, his age, at the age of Zoldon in this, like, he's bound to be a little bit grouchy. Little crank. I mean, I'd be mad too if I was just a giant floating head. I couldn't touch my junk. And it took. I mean, it, he's right. it, it took like sixty-five million years or something <laughs> for them to find him. Yeah. So what? What was he doing in that time, Sudoku? He's waited millions of years, and what he gets is a group of Asbo kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, anyone would be a little upset. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, that's the thing, too, where it's like, in the show, Zordon straight up says, bring me a group of teenagers with attitude. Like, he actually wanted that. Here, these are just the first jagoffs that show up at his door in 65 million years. He's got to just be thinking, like, like what, a scout troop or something couldn't have really? found me? <laughs> yeah, really, really, guys. You know, I couldn't get a black ops team to find me. I had to get you kids. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Rita had this weird Coachella cave woman thing going on. <laughs> and yeah, she, she is just... Spent too long at Burning Man. And she is just way too touchy-feely with this underage cast. It, it, I it will made say me this, think though. That, that, like, she, they wanted her to be Loki. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot. In fact, her staff makes the exact same sound effects as Loki's staff. Hmm. When they cast her, though, my first thought was there's no way Elizabeth Banks could be in any way repulsive. <laughs> they found but a way. They found a way. <laughs> Which, man, she to, to, to her credit, she goes through, like, a monster-esque transformation throughout the course of this. <laughs> also, you know, again, a lot of people say she wasn't good because she was hammy. I wish more of this movie was hammy like her because she just... Forget chewing the scenery. She devours every piece of scenery. <laughs> Absolutely. Except for that one scene where she's like in a, what is it, a Dunkin' Donuts or something? Oh, yeah. Uh, Krispy Kreme. The, the Krispy Kreme. Because Krispy Kreme sponsored the movie and you could get the special Krispy Kreme Power Rangers donuts. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't Man of Steel levels of like product placement, but it was, it was close. Pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> it was definitely close. The final battle right, needs didn't... to take place at a Krispy Kreme. <laughs> they didn't quite fight it out inside an IHOP, but still. No. Close. They fought outside it. They were a little closer. <laughs> Which I guess makes more sense. It's a bigger sign. And and look, the only reason I'm talking shit about those Power Rangers Krispy Kreme donuts is because I didn't get any Power Rangers Krispy Kreme <laughs> donuts because there are no Krispy Kremes in Canada. <laughs> oh, well, shit, got, we didn't talk. You've got Tim Hortons, though, or Jim Hortons, yeah. whatever it is. Tim Hortons. It's much better. It is much better. Which, hey, man, I, I surprised we didn't talk about this yet. This commentary is coming to you quite amazingly in three different time zones, Canada, Australia, and Britain. So we've got three different time zones to bring this great <laughs> reunion to you. <laughs> Hope you're happy. <clears throat> you can get gravy with your donuts. That's just oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> gravy with donuts? What? Yeah, the Tim Hortons has been pushing the new gravy thing just recently. In fact, uh, for the first time ever, they actually offer kids meals. They're actually trying to compete with uh, McDonald's for the first time ever in 2018. Do they offer that, that peanut butter cup burger? <laughs> no, what the fuck was up with that peanut butter? I had never even heard of that <laughs> franchise that you were tweeting about. And I'm just like, man, my heart, my heart fucking breaks for my country. It probably would break if, it, if you fucking ate that. <laughs> Shriveled. It sounds horrible as well. It does. <laughs> Peanut butter. I can't Im eat. Oh, I can't imagine anything worse. But you know what they're trying to do? Like uh, Shake Shack is that really popular American uh, burger joint. Apparently one of their secret menu items is you can get the peanut butter bacon burger is one of their things they offer. What the fuck? But it's not really peanut butter. It's like a peanut butter sauce that they make. I'm like, okay, well, that's different. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I would never do it, but, like, all right. I, I forget who the comedian was that told the joke, but it's it was something along the lines of, do you like spaghetti? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Here's some spaghetti, but there's shit on it. <laughs> but I don't like that. Oh, it was Donald Glover. Oh, yeah. Yeah, talking about his mother mixing the cereals and how his brother would just eat it anyway. It's like, there's shit on it. It's like, it's, you start eating it anyway. It's like, you motherfucker. You fucking bitch. Yeah, <laughs> eating yeah. it anyway because he loves spaghetti so much. Yeah, way to challenge stereotypes here by putting Asian people in a trailer park. I don't think I've ever seen that ever. <laughs> Like, what's that joke? There was an Asian comedian who tells the joke where it's like, hey, you know what? One of the great thing about being Asian is I know I'll never be homeless. Have you ever seen an Asian homeless person? <laughs> and I had to stop and I'm like, I honestly never have. <laughs> See, that that just reminds me of the Ricky Gervais podcast. They, they asked if anyone had actually seen a Chinese homeless person and someone might... emailed in like, I found one in my city and he's not only Chinese, but he's also a midget. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's like wow you f you found the homeless person trifecta uh -huh. and here we are in the yellow rangers home where again th we mentioned the whole uh th this movie was really quick to pat itself on the back for having the first lgbt power ranger even though they never equivocally say what her actual persuasion is they just say oh they they have a problem with my love life they have a problem with how i love but they they never say who what or how yeah her mother's a psychopath though yeah pee in the car <laughs> i i still i still think that all the parents in this film should have been former rangers that would have been fun <laughs> that would have been cool we find that out that that's like the twist because they have so much time for the parents in the movie there should have been something with them makes me feel like there was and they cut it mm. like heck <laughs> i would i would even respect like uh if they did like a stephen king it thing where it's like oh when we were working in the mines we did actually find zordon and we knew it was bad so that's why we babied you kids and tried to protect you and keep you away from it watching this again though it's the first time i've realized that the yellow ranger's dad is uh detective singh from the flash oh yeah. shit which is also, here's the thing, they filmed The Flash in the same place they filmed this movie, so that was probably a really easy day for him. <laughs> it's just a short taxi drive. Mm -hmm. uh, Rita of the Homeless Colony, because Goldar is also the Death Star of this movie, but is oh, also yeah, made we'll, of real gold. We'll, we'll talk about him when he comes. Uh, like, Rita like, is a crime, like, Rita is a crazy homeless person. It's mm -hmm. just like, I wonder if they watched doctor who the end of time with john sim oh yeah oh, this, guys. this looks exactly like that you're right when he's all cracked out on the street talking about juice and mm. sauce and everything <laughs> eating devouring the burger yeah and then that's... and then the homeless guys <laughs> that's literally what the oh my god tom you wow fuck that's exactly what that scene was now thankfully i know doctor who isn't filmed in the backwoods of canada to save money <laughs> They would if I could. Oh. Well, actually, it's funny we should mention that because the majority of Power Rangers shows, most of them are not actually filmed in America anymore. They're all filmed in New Zealand to save money. And it shows. Oh. It is funny, though, that this was shot in Canada because, like, Wales is definitely the Canada of England. Mm. <laughs> My grandmother is from Wales. I've never been. I mean, I'd like to go just to see some of the locations they filmed on, but... What That'd was... be about it. It'd be what, a good what, what... weekend, but yeah, I wouldn't yeah. want to spend it much longer. What was what was that joke in Red Dead Redemption One when John Marston was making fun of the one Welsh criminal? He's like, I won't be talked to uh, like that by a man with a sing song voice. And I'm like, is that the Welsh stereotype? They have sing song voices. <laughs> I mean, that accent is pretty great. To be fair, I couldn't even pick it out. Is the funny thing. <laughs> If you heard it, you would immediately be like, oh, I yeah. <laughs> then again, I, I don't know if people think I have an accent. I mean, I guess you probably do if I drop certain words in there. Like, like I'll drop an A in there sometimes, but only sometimes. Yeah, you mostly just sound American. Yeah, a lot of people think I am. <laughs> people are shocked when I tell them I'm from Canada. It's because you don't drop, like, the stereotypical, like, oot and a boot boot in a boot well because that's that's further that's further east they do that i'm in i'm in mainland central canada <laughs> 
it's 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 kind of like british and australian too where it's like there's not one accent there's several accents that you have to pick it out yeah yeah, yeah. It is funny, actually, how basically every country in the world thinks of every other country as having only one accent, but there's mm -hmm. like 10 different accents mm -hmm. in England. There's probably mm -hmm. like 10 in Australia, 10 in Canada. Same America problem. definitely has many. Oh, yeah. And so to use your powers, you must grow closer as a team first. This is a, this is like our Pacific Rim thing, too, where you need to earn it. You just don't get to pilot the big robot from the get-go. <laughs> you need to fight these putties. That aren't oh, that actually yeah. look way more like golems, which is what they were called in the Japanese. I mean, that's kind of cool that they were named golems in Japanese, but I mean, I, I was kind of hoping they would look like they were made out of putty. Mm -hmm. To which a lot of having slightly gooey looking. I'm such a nerd. People are like, "Oh, aren't they supposed to have little Z's on their chest that they press and they blow up?" No, uh, uh, that was season two onward when Lord Zed come and made his Z putties. That was a later development, although because they reused so much Japanese footage, they'd have the regular putties and the Z putties all mixed together all the time. It is funny, though, that this is their training montage, but they're using none of the powers that they use as Power Rangers. Nope. Yeah, they're just, like, like <laughs> well, doing, like, like boxing. <laughs> yeah, what's they... even the point? <laughs> there's no martial arts. I mean, I guess there's a kind of... They kick occasionally, but... <laughs> Look, guys, I looked up all these UFC videos on YouTube. Let's just do like how Chuck Liddell do. I mean, surely they, like, it would have been more useful to train them in how to transform into like a Megazord or something. <laughs> you know, powers they might actually need later. I mean, uh, it would uh, even make sense because they do transform into the <laughs> into a Megazord later in the movie. But they they, do. how they found out they could do that, I have no idea. Doesn't like, maybe one it is done, like one of them like come across like the zords like it is like oh what's this oh right yeah we get a whole piloting montage like, yeah this this is where jason david frank and uh amy joe johnson this is where they were originally supposed to have their cameo they were at like the next table and they're watching this I like that no one like like gives a shit that that just happened <laughs> Yeah, the the soundtrack here also kind of forgettable. Again, if they ever made my dream period piece Power Rangers movie, I would make it just a total, uh, was it total vehicle for '90s nostalgia music? Is what I would do. I would fill it with one hit wonders from the '90s. I mean, I'm Which... a sucker for a montage that's got like a piece of music that references the Rocky series. Something yeah. like a cross between the Power Rangers theme and like Gotta Fly Now or something would have been amazing. <laughs> All good. Because, hey, here's the thing. Uh, say what you want about that original Power Rangers movie uh, from the 90s with Ivan Ooze. That had a baller soundtrack. Higher ground from Red Hot Chili Peppers. Man. They spent all the, all the I... money on the music. They spent all the money on the music, as you should. And, and they filmed that movie in Australia. They did. They filmed it in Sydney. And several uh, episodes of the show, too, they had a whole arc where it's like, oh, the Rangers need to go to Australia. Why? Because we're filming the movie there. That's why. <laughs> I need to watch that movie again. I haven't seen it in years. It's silly but enjoyable, which I think at the end of the day is kind of how you can chop this one up, too. I mean, the stupidest decision, though, is they spent all that money making these updated costumes for them, and then they spend, like, three quarters of the movie not wearing them. Aye, yeah. that's a real pisser. <laughs> that really, really well, is. It's I mean, how kind stupid. of similar to um, the original movie. Remember that? They had, like, these really cool looking Oh, like, and then they get rid of them in the they, beginning. Yeah, get rid of them, like, almost immediately. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. But it's like they go and they train and they get these, like, just basically ninja outfits. It's just like, you know what, once they get their powers back, just put them back in the badass, like, amazing new costumes that they designed for them. Like, you spent all that money on it. Like, one of my favorite childhood memories is going to Planet Hollywood in Florida and seeing the Red Ranger costume in display case. Like, that was awesome. Is that still there? I would love to go there and do that. It, this was, like, 1998. Yeah, <laughs> so God, someone, on, someone on Bath Salts probably stole it. <laughs> <laughs> i mean what else are you gonna do but it's totally been sold to a collector or something that's my big question yeah who the hell owns those suits some yeah probably some like saudi drug lord or something owns them. <laughs> <laughs> something easy to really specific i collect all the power rangers suits 
Yes, I own them all. This is what I spent my drug money on. Really? <laughs> yes. Doesn't Arnold Schwarzenegger own like a third of Planet Hollywood or something? Yes. Like, I wonder if he just has them all in like a warehouse somewhere. <laughs> it was Schwarzenegger, someone famous as ex-wife, and I think like the Russian mafia had a little bit of it too. <laughs> I think Bruce Willis had a stake for a while, but maybe not. What was it? Bruce Willis or one of Bruce Willis's exes? I think had a piece of maybe, it. Maybe it was Demi Moore. It might have been Demi Moore. <laughs> just imagine Demi Moore just has like a garage full of Power Ranger costumes. <laughs> she she just let dude like that. She's just like I don't know why I have these. I wasn't even in those movies. She it's keeps it's on her list. Get rid of them as like party favors. <laughs> like oh guys, take it, take the, the Black Ranger costume. I don't Please want to take something. <laughs> It's on her list of things to do. Get rid of Christmas tree, uh, you know, redo the kitchen, get rid of these damn Power Ranger suits. Well, maybe one day they'll do a Power Rangers like crossover like the um, Elseworlds one oh, that yeah. CW did and just like bring back the 90s Power Rangers in those suits. I'm fine for that. Hey, you know, that's the thing uh, for, you know, uh, as every, you know, for the stuff that it gets wrong, the CW universe, I think by and large, they get a lot of things right. With yeah. their superheroes, they should strike a deal for the new Power Rangers show. Make it something that comes on after the Flash, like a primetime Power Rangers show on CW. I mean, that's it, they could do a lot worse. That's basically what this movie is: is the CWification yeah. of Power Rangers. But yeah. you know what? Don't have it be two hours. Have it be twenty-two minutes every week. <laughs> did you guys read the Power Rangers Justice League crossover yes, comic? Yes, 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 I did. Like, that was great. Yes, it was. <laughs> like, I... Can you imagine if CW got the rights to Power Rangers? <laughs> like, down the line, they could do like, an adaptation of that with, like, Supergirl and The Flash. And... I'm fine with all of that. In fact, I think that's worth it. You, That's what you bring to the meeting. That's your end game. Look, let CW do it so we can have this at some point. <laughs> so we can't do Batman, but we can have Superman, Supergirl, The Flash, Arrow, Legends, and Batwoman. Yeah, you can have like, That would be awesome. Hell, you could even bring in Black Lightning from another universe altogether. Yes, please. I like how how it's never never like explained why he he changed. He changed because he tried to break up the fight. Ah, uh, because it's connected to his heart. You see, he was pure <laughs> of heart, and that's how the powers work. I guess it works because plot convenience. <laughs> It's tied to your emotions, which is tied to plot convenience. His autism activated it. <laughs> oh, no. But then it immediately disactivates because it's too expensive. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> we kind of miss, it's too long. You, you can see a little bar, like in a video game, ticking down at the bottom. Oh, you've run out of special meter. Yeah, he, he ran out of his dead eye. <laughs> <laughs> Chew some tobacco and uh, drink some booze to get it back. <laughs> Pull out the snake oil. Oh, see, that's what we need. We need Rita being like, oh, we can't have these kids, you know, be true to themselves and get their power. How can I distract them? Oh, I'll just ply them with cigarettes and alcohol. <laughs> it will briefly them. restore it, but it will damage your cause. <laughs> yeah, it'll damage your cars. <laughs> you can't be a ranger if you have damaged cars. <laughs> oh, that's disappointing, too. Why has there not been a really good Power Rangers video game? I don't know, because it, 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 it should be so simple to make. You should Borderlands the shit out of that. It should be a cooperative game you play with three other people. I mean, hell, even something like... Um, I mean, the Saints Row games yeah. aren't fantastic, but they had a pretty decent co-op. They did. So, something like that with like the superpowers and stuff, like Saints Row 4. Before I think Saints Row the rails. 2 was actually the best one in the series. Who owns the Four Power had, Rangers Four games? had more superpowers, though. Yeah. Hmm. I think in Japan, uh, for what is it, for the other tokusetsai shows, like uh, Kamen Rider and everything, they made, like, a really good, like, Dynasty Warrior-style Muso thing where you were one guy fighting down, like, a dozen henchmen. Imagine that, but if it was just, like, facing down a million putties at once and just kicking the shit out of them. That would be cool. I'd be all for it. And then at the end, for the big boss, you get to jump in the robot. <laughs> I'm so trying like, to remember. When I was a kid, I'm sure I had a Power Rangers game on the Super I did, Nintendo. I did. Yeah. I had a couple. Yeah. I had the the Power Rangers the movie game. There was that one, right. and I think there might have been just like a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game. There was a light speed rescue one I played on the PS2 that they actually seemed to try and put some time and effort oh, in. Was that the one that I played on the N64? Which I think it might be. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I had the Mighty Morphin movie one. But I can't, I, I honestly can't remember. So, Rita Goldfinger here. I need gold, all the gold. I'm going to irradiate the US's supply of gold. Jesus Christ. I mean, that artifact doesn't look like anything that anyone would want to buy. Yeah, really. It clearly is just designed to look alien. You know what it looks like? It looks like one of those things you can buy at, like, like shitty pop-up boutiques that sell, uh, like, sell, like, samurai swords. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It Because it probably is. <laughs> <laughs> Freddy Krueger looks at this lady and goes, geez, you need to rest. <laughs> you look rough. Moisturize. <laughs> <laughs> hey kids, this is your face on drugs. <laughs> Just hamming the fuck out of all of it. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> you have AIDS now. <laughs> That's how it happens. Space AIDS. We know this because we're the product of our school systems. <laughs> Since she's about to make Goldar, like, how disappointed were you guys in the design? Very. I remember the first time I actually saw it, it was actually like a toy design. I was like, oh, it's not really like that in the film. That's just like, it's a fucking toy. <laughs> Can't possibly <laughs> be that, that bad. Well. Then, oh, no. It's a shame, too, because Goldar had one of the best goddamn monster designs. Yeah, he yeah. was just like a big like wolf in like 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 ancient Egyptian armor. I think it's he was like supposed a blue to be monkey a... face. Yeah. yeah, I think he was supposed to. Well, okay. Well, this is where it gets confusing because they always treated him like a flying monkey, and like Rita was the evil witch of the West and everything. But in the original Japanese, his name is Gryphazor, so he was clearly supposed to be some manner of griffin. <laughs> yeah, that that sound her staff makes is totally the same sound Loki's staff makes in Avengers, which makes me think it has to be a generic sound effect. Yeah. Heck, we miss you. We don't know who you are. Fuck <laughs> are you? It's been literally sixty-five million years, for Christ's sake. Uh -huh. How how old do you think humans are? Like, how long do you think we live? Cool guys don't look at explosions. <laughs> Since we're hearing the generic sound effects, though, I'm amazed we haven't had a Wilhelm scream. But... Oh yeah. Is is there not one in this? Part of me wants to say there was. Not that I've noticed so far. Oh, Maybe during cool. the end sequence we'll hear one. And so here, the the one actually kind of well, okay, the one of two parts of the movie I genuinely like and go, okay, you should have had more of this. We now call this meeting of the Midnight Society together. <laughs> That's oh just shit! What I was thinking. Oh shit! We're updating the wrong uh, '90s franchise. Fuck. <laughs> Hey, you guys told us this was an Are You Afraid of the Dark movie. Well, we've been making a Power Rangers movie this whole time. What? So <laughs> I the director I... didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I present to you the tale of the dastardly demon. <laughs> that sounds what? like an Are You Afraid of the Dark story, doesn't it? <laughs> what? I thought we were uh, all doing a big budget version of Wishbone. <laughs> That's one of those shows, though, Are You Afraid of the Dark, that I've tried to go back and watch it again because I remember loving it as a kid, and it, mm -hmm. it's just impossible now. It's rough. Yeah, it yeah. really is. That's another Canadian one, too, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Even Goosebumps, which I used to love just as mm -hmm. much, like, really doesn't hold up. Yeah, but I've even believe... reread one of the Goosebumps books recently, and the books still are kind of enjoyable. I still can't believe the show Goosebumps kind of scared me when I was young. Now you go back and it's like, this is fucking corny. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, what was wrong with me? <laughs> it's more campy Have, have you scary. seen the two new Goosebumps films? No, I haven't. They re the first one's the, really good. The, the first, first one. Yeah, the first one is I it? really liked with Jack Black. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Second one's apparently shit. Yeah, Although Jack Black does return to voice Slappy again, apparently. Yeah. Oh. Although it's, it's clearly Jack Black doing his best Mark Hamill as the Joker impersonation. 
What gets me about uh, the Goosebumps movies is that Jack Black did those, and then there's that movie, like, The House with the Clock in the Wall, yeah. and I'm like, wait, that's, that, that's not a Goosebumps sequel <laughs> when I saw the trailer? It, it, sh it's, it looks and sounds like it should be. Was that just Jack Black being like, well, fuck you, I'll make my own sequel over here, and we'll have Black Jack and Hookers. And then when, that, and, then, and then when that failed, he just, I'm going to make gaming videos on YouTube. Yeah, I'm going to be a Let's Player now where I'm like, you know what, Jack Black, you go for it. There's no way you can be more annoying than a lot of the people who are popular Let's to, Players. To be fair, he's not actually doing it like all the other people are doing. He's doing it like his videos, I've been watching them, they're like actual, have actual information in them. What? Like, like he like the, the most recent one he did he went to like the pinball hall of fame and just like oh, showed sure. everyone around like like pinball machines from like 1940s and stuff so he's not just screaming into a face cam though no oh he's, he does that too but like it's funny <laughs> <laughs> also i i get the strong feeling jack black won't drop the n word anytime soon and have every other youtuber suffer because of it <laughs> But he could, you know, you never know. The show's still young. <laughs> Talking of that, though, I mean, I, I it's something that's completely passed me by. Why is everyone on Reddit and Twitter and all that shit saying subscribe to PewDiePie recently? Oh, because there's like a big Bollywood group that was going to overtake him. They might actually have overtaken him, I don't know, as like the number one... Uh, most subscribed to channel on YouTube, and everyone's like, "No, we got we got to keep it cell phone. You know, we got to keep it PewDiePie. You know, anyone can make videos." To which I'm like, "Fucking bullshit! PewDiePie's the most corporate motherfucker YouTube there is. <laughs> he he would have been owned by Disney if he didn't shout about rape a bunch and get a bunch of his shit dropped. That's the only reason he's not working for a big company because he's literally too volatile." I mean, he guessed it on South Park three years ago. He can't I, get much more corporate at this point. Exactly. I, I cannot believe he did that. And the only reason he did that is because the South Park guys are all fathers now and all their kids watch PewDiePie. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I didn't understand why everyone was calling to subscribe to him. Honestly, the yeah. Bollywood like channel is overtaking. Good for them. Yeah. What even is, Again, sorry. is it? Like, Clearly I, they're I've putting out some decent of content. I've never even Neither heard of I. them, and yet they're apparently popular yeah. than any of them. Probably because India is so incredibly overpopulated mm -hmm. that, of course, Bollywood is well subscribed over there. It's probably one of the only channels they've got. Mm. It is what... Oh, let's talk about the creepiness of this scene, too, where Rita's all up in uh, Trini's business. This, this again, makes me feel like there's some shit here that got cut out that might actually have been interesting because... The, the whole reason here that Rita says, like, oh, I used to be a ranger, too. I used to be on a team with Zordon, but, you know, they kicked me out because I was different, kind of like you, and this is the character that they're implying to be some part of the LGBT spectrum. Are they are they trying to say that Zordon was homophobic and he kicked Rita out because she was gay? <laughs> I mean, I guess they are. That's th that was the reading I got from this, and they they never explore this scene further, nor do they talk to Zordon and be like, "Hey, why did you kick Rita out?" Yeah, you, also, that's a good thing, uh, yeah. why are her parents not bursting in the room, being like, "What the fuck is going on in here?" <laughs> Pee in the cup. They were yeah, they were clearly the paranoid <laughs> piss in the cup parents. <laughs> Pee in the cup now. Pee yeah, in the cup <laughs> now. Rita pisses in the cup and it just burns a hole in it. <laughs> it's just green. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh yeah i forgot i'm also the green ranger too in this but my green armor doesn't work somehow even though i have my Some... crystal <laughs> i'm getting it back it's like riding a bike you never forget i mean i'm wondering if before reshoots if somehow like rita what's what's the word corrupted yellow somehow mm -hmm. so like, it's like, like, like uh... makes her sort of like the tommy oliver Right, but they're like, no, no, we gotta save that for a sequel. Everyone's gonna love this movie, and we're gonna get a sequel. Well, like Hawkeye in the first Avengers, like, that. Barton's been compromised. Like, maybe this is the scene where she was supposed to, like, infect Yellow and, you know, have That's her turn the on the scene. This movie seems like, like, like a combination of all those, of, like, like, like Man of Steel, Transformers, mm -hmm. The Avengers, like, like, these are all semi-popular films. Let's, like, Let's take aspects. Take, yeah, take little bits from each of them that don't work at all. 
mean, it's, it's kind of what Marvel do with their movies, how they take bits of storylines from all these different titles mm-hmm. and put it together into one coherent story. But the difference is Marvel aren't just doing it really... I mean, they, they are doing it for a paycheck, but, but they're, they're doing competently... It really yeah, they're doing it competently. Like They're, they're taking from they're... stories that complement each other. They're not taking... Let's exactly. take Demon of a Bottle and mix it with fucking secret empire and and infinity wars and and mr fantastic's wedding or something Uh, (laughs) random stories can we also say too here that in the last five minutes we've had two people break into someone else's bedroom do do no one in angel grove have security systems or dogs or anything no because it's a failed mining town they can't afford Uh. security systems (laughs) can't afford dogs either no once you the mine, the fi- once the mine, um, dried out, oh, the dogs all escaped the town. <laughs> the dogs all left when the mining jobs dried up. <laughs> uh, now this, that sounds like a spin-off. There's just this mass horde of dogs <laughs> leaving the town. Now you, now you see, look, if Angel Grove is a failing mining town and a failing fishing town, Rita was going about this all wrong just trying to steal gold you should have said look if you give me all the gold i will reopen the mine you can trust me i'm surprised they didn't (laughs) say like the mine was a gold mine ah see that would have made more sense sense. (laughs) you have it like right right there (laughs) like an old california gold mine is this movie even in california anymore because i know that's something none of the like topography look looks like it like it's all like like, huge like hills like you'd see in like 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 seattle or something well it's cam loops british columbia so yeah. yeah seattle is not too far so yeah that's basically where we are which again is weird because california was such a huge part of power rangers that that's clearly where it took place is this the same school that they shot in that was in smallville because it does uh, remind me kind of the uh, mr mixer's Pidlick episode I was just thinking that probably yeah hmm it's funny as soon as you said that i'm noticing how similar it actually is like they didn't even bother redressing half the set no. just uh, put a few new banners down that'll be enough that's eh, fine another thing that this movie jettisons which i can understand why they did it because you know it's very corny and very after school special but when you stop and think about it it makes such a huge mm-hmm. uh backbone of power rangers None of these kids are interested in martial arts or fighting or anything like that, even though martial arts and, like, fitness was such a massive part of the Power Rangers show. When you stop and think about it, they were always having karate tournaments and shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, even Pink was always getting karate lessons. Yeah. Yeah, that, nah, but... that, that's very strange. Yeah, kids today don't have interest, man. They're all on their damn smartphones, man. I know. I'm a, I'm a screenwriter for Hollywood. <laughs> I mean, it could have been worse. They could have been like, oh, I'm amazed we'll, we'll that they get didn't... powers like Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, again, too, you know, it's it's a shame this movie didn't come out now because one of the other things the Power Rangers loved to do, uh, they loved protesting and crusading, and they were all, like, trying to save the whales and save the environment and everything, which is, like, you know, very, very 90s after-school special. To think if they tried to make this nowadays, you know, what would the Power Rangers pet cause be? Probably school shootings. We don't want to get shot anymore. <laughs> Bulk and but they'd be, be protesting. Oh, no, but probably. <laughs> but, but but they'd be like they'd be really protesting soon. at a school shooting yeah, while they'd... doing the Carlton dance <laughs> and the dance that Turk does in Scrubs. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the idea, though, of Balkan Skull school shooters. They'd probably be really bad at it, though. They'd probably be school shooting it, but I thought you were going to bring the ammo. Oh, no, do to do fall on some cake. <laughs> Balkan Skull, like, they point their guns, pull the trigger once, and accidentally hit themselves in the head with a gun and <laughs> knock themselves out. It's like they keep trying, but they keep fucking it up every day. <laughs> <laughs> they knock themselves out on every attempt. Yep. Spend half the movie unconscious. Also, now we got the Street Rumble Rangers. Did you ever think you'd see a Power Ranger movie where they pick up chains and boards with nails in them to fight? Rita just body slammed a homeless man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's there's a lot of wrestling moves later. I think if I remember, they defeat the monster by giving him like a Brock Lesnar German soup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you noticed the homeless man has completely disappeared as well? Yep. Maybe like she body slammed him into oblivion. Maybe Dissolved. he was a 
Most homeless man. It's like Man of Steel with the collateral damage, like... <laughs> and any any bystanders that get killed are just out of sight. Yeah, out of mind. Weird. Don't worry, it'll come back in the sequel. It's why Batman wants to kill the Power Rangers. Uh, <laughs> Batman v Power Rangers. Yeah, we're gonna get a scene 20. where like Bruce Wade was like escaping the docks <laughs> as they were fighting. Repeat, Rita Repulsa sending in postcards saying you let your family die. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but they're all written on like used toilet paper from the dump where she lives because she doesn't have a moon base. Like, Lord Christ. Zed's in a wheelchair. Oh, and blows no. up Congress. Uh, <laughs> I could see it. <laughs> this this scene actually fucked me up a little bit here because I always have a weird phobia of uh, drowning while tied up for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> because of this I don't think that's a phobia that's just common sense that would, that would be a terrible way to die anyone Probably. who's not afraid of that is a fool he's a psychopath look if you're not afraid of being tied up and drowned then you're not paying attention maybe I want to die exactly. like that maybe that's my you know you know how many people get tied up and drowned every day of the week more than you'd think but less than you hope <laughs> Again, too, you rarely ever saw the Power Rangers get tortured, did you, during the old show? <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. Gotta, gotta get, the, bi the big thing, the, the big important linchpin of Act 3 is we need to defend the Krispy Kreme from evil. How do we get to the Krispy Kreme? <laughs> Just get on Turkish Airlines. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, get, I, get it there. Uh... At least it's not like Man of Steel where like, Mark Kent works at Sears. It's not like, oh, J <laughs> Jace's dad, when he's not fishing, goes and works at the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get your Turkish Airlines, you drive to the Krispy Kreme in your Volvo. The thing about Turkish Airlines is they have this uh, slogan, Expand Your World, which perfectly... <laughs> Relates to the Power Rangers. <laughs> Very much so. They're always expanding their worlds. <laughs> you see, Tigger's Airlines is a real company, and we want to make this real. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you know, we talk so much about Turkish Airlines, I feel like maybe they should send us free passes so we can fly on Turkish Airlines just to really get a feel for how good it is. I'm not saying first class, but at least, you know, business class. <laughs> you know, fly to Turkey, get some delights. I'd be really annoying if I went to Turkey. Where are your delights? Point me towards the delights. Oops. Oh, that's right. I forgot. They, like, resurrect him with Power Ranger magic, don't they? Yeah, they, like, take him to the, um, the thing in, like, that's like a piece of paper, and it's, like, it should, shouldn't be like that. It should, it should be, like, mush. <laughs> But we needed the yeah, message. Yeah, it looks like tissue. <laughs> the also, ink, that ink should be smudged. <laughs> also, th this did my head in too. They can resurrect him through the power of Power Rangers magic, but poor black Asian character's mom is dying, and never once does he say, "Hey Zordon, can I use this power to resurrect my dying mom?" <laughs> I hadn't even thought of that. That's what I, it I, really. That's why I wanted like the parents to be like, um, X Rangers, like the the, the Zeo crystal like fucked her up or something. Right, like maybe she's only sick and dying because she got exposed to something in the mine where everything goes down in Angel Grove in the mine. Seriously, Man, think they... though, this is one of the most pointless deaths in cinema. For like, real. literally fix it in less than five minutes. In less than five minutes. Oh. Did they... Oh, no, they... Uh, I thought they like, <laughs> they, like, dumped his body off the cliff and then followed after him. <laughs> You think, too, they'd really install an elevator? Do they really have to do the water entrance every time? That's going to be a major pain in the ass. Not as much of a pain in the ass, though, as getting out again. Yeah, exactly, to which yeah. they don't even show how they do it. I like how we shirt, like, vaguely, like, references, like, prostitution. Yeah, cash only. Also, it's red. <laughs> 
which which is another thing this movie doesn't do. They don't color coordinate their rangers the way the show did, where it's like you can only wear red now and you can only wear pink. Well, no, see the thing is that they do it for some of them. Like he's he's got a little bit of red, she's got a little bit of pink. Mm-hmm. Billy had like a blue folder. Right, and I think uh, yeah, and black rangers were in black pants. I think. It's just not quite enough, is it really? No, you got to go all the way. You get... Again, as Tommy Oliver joked when he became the Black Dino Force Ranger, there it's like, hey, you got to change your entire wardrobe now. I mean, maybe this was just a British thing. Did in in the, like the nineties or early two thousands, did you guys have those um, plastic wristbands like beat bullying and shit? It was no, like blue ones, so. red ones, multi-colored wristbands. Oh, like so. snap bracelets. I think we got yeah. them, but not till like way after the fact. Again, Britain is always on the cutting edge of shit like this. But if they'd set this in the late nineties, early two thousands, they could have each had like a wristband in their own color. Yeah, like, that they could... just a simple enough touch. Yeah, they could have all had little jelly bracelets. I'd be fine. What the fuck with is that thing yeah. she's wearing around her neck? That pink thing. Yeah, oh, it's. Oh, it's, is it's it... just really bizarre. Yeah, it's like, is that part of the shirt, or is that, like, some weird bondage bra thing she's got going on? Mm. I also, not find she's... anything else that was pink. <laughs> also, she's clearly a big fan of Biggie, because she's wearing, it was all the dream crop top. Because, you know, Biggie Smalls loved the Power Rangers. It was well documented. Well, in this universe, Biggie was a Power Ranger. Oh, oh, the Power Rangers of rap. We need that. Which rappers are secretly Power Rangers? Well, Snoop Dogg is definitely the Green Ranger. Oh, no doubt. The Ganja Ranger. <laughs> or at least, you know, it's like, you know, hey, it's morphin' time. He just hits his joint and then he just imagines he is one. <laughs> I'm just thinking with, with this movie and all its product placement, surely they should have just got some, like, sneaker company. To, like sponsor and do like have each of them in their own shoes oh that would have been really smart yeah and i probably would have bought some i i never bought the dc comics high tops even though like i saved uh the green arrow ones like in my uh like shopping basket for like over a year i'm like i'm gonna buy these high tops no i'm gonna buy these high tops no mm. it could have been like sponsored by converse all stars or something and each yeah. had a different color they, yeah. need, they needed a tracksuit company is what they needed, like a shell suit company <laughs> so every Power Ranger could have a color-coded tracksuit. Yeah, it would have been so simple to incorporate the colors in an easy and subtle way. See, they, they just weren't thinking, these guys. CG Walter splitting out of his mouth. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even look slightly real. Yeah, they couldn't have the actor, like, put water in his mouth ah. and just spit it out yeah either that or they just chose that <laughs> one shot of the movie to shoot in a different frame rate they, or shutter speed they they did but he kept like choking on it <laughs> he kept actually drowning <laughs> yeah. they had to keep resuscitating him <laughs> don't swallow the water Look, look, Jason, I'm not saying you're more important than the rest of them, but people always love the Red Ranger more, so yeah, you're kind of important. Until there's a green or white ranger, in which case, more, you're you're the leader of this team. That whole speak was like trailer talk. <laughs> oh god, yeah. You are you are the leader of this team, Jason, until you're supplanted in a sequel that will never happen by a far more popular character. <laughs> what did you prefer though is with Jason? Did you prefer him to be the Green Ranger or the White Ranger? Mm-hmm. Green was cool because he had the whole anti-hero thing going on, but, like, the White Ranger was, like, the super, like, overpowered, like, god-tier ranger. Yeah. I always liked the Green Ranger's costume more, though, with, like, the gold over his shoulders coming down like that. That was just badass. Yeah. I'm sure I've mentioned it elsewhere, too, but did you know the White Suit Power Ranger, that was from a completely different show than the other Power Rangers costumes? Yeah, it was from the the one after it, wasn't it? Yes, yes he was. And in fact, that White Ranger was a little kid who grew up into a man a la Shazam. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. It it fit, though. Like, the costume, it looked perfectly... Like, it worked in the Mighty Morphin suit. Like, he had the same style helmet and all that shit. Mm -hmm. I really love how these these are actually meant to be teenagers, yet the the Asian guy looks like he's he's been bodybuilding for, like, 40 years. (laughs) 
Well, <laughs> well, they kept that part real from Power Rangers, a bunch of adults pretending to be kids. <laughs> Actually, apparently, uh, what is it that you mentioned the Asian guy there, the actor, uh, Ludai, I think is his name there. He actually went like undercover to his old high school to see if he could blend in with the kids. He basically pulled a real life Steve Buscemi. Hello, fellow kids. <laughs> <laughs> to get get ready they for immediately this. immediately like knew who he was <laughs> like, well oh, apparently some uh, some teachers caught him because they're like hey i didn't know you still went here and he's like ah foiled again <laughs> and then he ran <laughs> off <laughs> shouting oh, the here, curses at them here's our cool guys walking a straight line hey don't you like tombstone i do were these suits all cgi or did they actually no, they, they actually them? built them so, I mean, they, they look pretty decent. They're enhanced with CGI with all the, the lion thingies in it and everything. Yeah. Looking for some happiness, but there is only loneliness to find. See, that's what they should do. They should just put some uh, reservoir dogs over that as they all walk <laughs> in a straight line. Yeah, Real. I do like the costume design, though. I mean, they, they look a little bit over-designed, but... They look like rock candy for me. That's my problem. In fact, uh, I think I, I bitched about that on Twitter, saying it was a bold move to make these costumes entirely out of rock candy. I bet they saved a bundle. And uh, that a big website actually picked up on that with a bunch of other tweets of people being bitchy about the movie. And I'm like, amazing. My one, my one tweet that goes viral and gets on a big news site is me bitching about Power Rangers, as it should be. <laughs> so apparently the mine is a gold mine? Or there was gold there they never found because maybe they're just a shitty mine and maybe that's why it went belly up because they couldn't yeah. find the gold that was there. If they were better at their jobs, the whole town wouldn't be bankrupt. <laughs> so here we enter the final stretch of the movie, which, as you said, uh, Tom, basically feels like a totally different movie. I, I am more okay with this because literally for the next 22 minutes... This just becomes a normal episode of Power Rangers. Monster shows up, fights the putties, Zor fight the end. Yeah. To where I almost, when I was in the theater, I'm like, you, you motherfucker, you actually did it. The last 22 minutes is just an episode. Oh my god. Which is what makes me annoyed that it's not going to be a sequel, because it would have just been all this. <laughs> or at least we can hope it would. Yeah. Maybe they'll learn that lesson when they inevitably make another one. Doesn't doesn't Hasbro own them now? I think Hasbro yeah. owns them now. And they, they, it's like you know, it's, it's the lesson they should have learned after the first movie, though. If they if they did do another one, mainly, and if they use like the same people that got making the current Transformers films, because that Bumblebee film mm -hmm. was really good. Yeah, that's what I heard. <clears throat> and can we have John Cena in it too? Can John Cena be Zordon? <laughs> Look, kids, I gotta teach you to hustle, loyalty, and respect. Only then will the power protect you. <laughs> it is What's funny, the... though, that this movie has the same lesson to be learned by the studio execs as the original Mighty Morphin movie. Yeah. Like, just basically don't keep the Rangers out of the costumes for nine-tenths of the movie. You think they would have learned that? When people see a Power Rangers movie, they want to see the Power Rangers. Considering the trailers were just 90%. The last like tenth of the movie. Yep. Oh, I, I think we missed it too. I think Rita actually does say "Make my monster grow." She does. Yeah. She did. Yeah. There we go. We put we put one reference in there. You got one. I I I I. I don't think they do more phenomenal. No. Which God, that's fine. God damn that gold out is like shit. Yeah, it is. It really so is. terrible. Uh, they're all sparkly. They look like giant lollipops. They look delicious. <laughs> I just hate how they, their masks come back to reveal their faces, as if we haven't seen their faces enough. That just that let them was, keep the helmets on. That was actually a big problem with the original '90s Power Ranger movie too. There's set footage you can find of them wearing the suits without faces in them because they're like, oh well, we have to see the actors' faces. That's just something movie makers could not grasp. Mm. Oh, it's like, the it's like Spider Man inside. Three though. Exactly. Here's the fucking the okay, this I loved. This I got hyped in the theater. I'm like, all right, you used the original theme and you picked the best time for it. All right, all right. See, I didn't like that moment though in the theater because it sounds like they just slapped an MP3 over the edit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, like a last I, I would have much thing. rather imagine if they got like the composer to do like this epic like orchestral version of the original theme. 
which which also exists because of the first movie, so they could have just yeah. reused that. But I mean, I would have much preferred that. It just it it seemed like they the sound design was very lazy in that moment. It's like they literally just took the edit, slapped it in MP3 on the timeline, it, and that was it. It's because it was probably a last minute edition again to steal yeah. a wrestling term. It was a cheap pop, is what it was. We needed a cheap pop right here. Definitely was. But you know, I'm a, I'm a stupid mark for songs I like. <laughs> I would I, I don't know I, I'm a sucker for like when they take an old theme tune and what make like this it? badass like orchestral version of it like, hey you know they could they could have done a terrible remix from it from like Pitbull oh, or something oh god oh that would have been so much worse I'm triggered I mean even this song I am so sick of at this point oh yeah too much Kanye hey do hey, you remember that year got... when it was you remember E3 everything. that year when they just like every other game trailer used this song? Yeah, for real. But like, I've been sick of this song since then, and this is like four <laughs> years later. It's yeah. it, and yeah, and like it's and like it was old in 2017 when they used it. Oh, yeah. they stepped on it's four years too late. <laughs> no. Yeah, guy. Again, as we mentioned, maybe don't throw stones in glass houses. Maybe don't think you're gonna be better than the Transformer series before your movies even uh, the box office is in. Admittedly, the movie is actually better than Transformers. Didn't I do, mean, do as well, but it's. it's I mean, I didn't leave better. angry from this one as I left from the bulk of Transformers movies. Yeah. Again, though, just replace this music with an orchestral remix of the original theme with some amazing like electric guitar over and it. You'll be fine. Yeah. But yeah, man, I forgot that they used Kanye in this. And yeah, you're right, because it's like, oh, these characters got a lot of power. What song should we use? I know the song Power. Also, this was back when just Kanye was regular crazy, not today <laughs> when he's super special awesome crazy. Oh, <laughs> uh, here we go. Are you, are, are you uh, ready to... Product placement. Earn, earn, earn your fucking money, movie. <laughs> Which, which is so funny, too. Pfft, do you think Elizabeth Banks eats donuts? I sh I surely doubt it. This is the most unrealistic <laughs> part of the movie. <laughs> she probably spat that donut out on a key grip as soon as the camera changed. <laughs> key grip. That was the vomit grip. He was yeah, there bring just me to be my... Vomit, <laughs> just to be there to be vomited on. <laughs> it's a living five years of film school. <laughs> you know, we all gotta start somewhere in Hollywood. I wonder what Elizabeth Banks sees as more of the, uh, like, the, um, what's it, the blot on her career. Like this, or Zack and Miri make a porno? Ooh, I, hey, I, I enjoyed bits of Zack and Miri make a porno, but I also enjoyed bits of this, too, so. Me, too, but, I mean, it was just as much of a box office bomb as this movie. That, ooh, that's true. Yeah. Why, why did they, why did he crash his car? Because he just got a little bit of, like, gold on the car. Why did, that wouldn't make <laughs> you crash your car. It's his son Just needs to save him. On. <laughs> he saw the gold and was like, oh my god, I'm rich, and just lost control. <laughs> he was too busy thinking about how rich he's going to be. I will admit, too, when he saves his dad, this is kind of a cool, very superhero-y moment. Yeah. And that he can't tell him, though. Because the Power Rangers need to keep their secret identities for reasons, which is a question they've never answered, even in the show, why that's important. Yeah, I... I don't understand that. I would have thought they. I, I mean, I, I wonder if that was the thing that would they were gonna like tell the parents, and then like they, they, in like later movies, the team would become like the Avengers. Right. Because it is like one of those situations where it's like, well, clearly the villains are very respectable in the Power Rangers universe and don't attack you at home or at school or anything. <laughs> they only attack you on your off time. Yeah, the, the villains all seem to know their secret identities. So why does it matter who their parents do? Yeah, the, the villains sometimes have, like, 24-hour surveillance of the kids and know exactly what they're doing. Exactly. I've stated before, if I was a Power Rangers villain, I would just wait till they were, like, on the toilet and then spawn 30 <laughs> putty patrollers to beat the shit out of them while they have their pants around their ankles. <laughs> Problem solved. You're just in the toilet and you hear a sound coming from the shower and you're just like, oh, shit, sorry, I didn't realize she was in here. You pull the... Now, as you get up to leave, just the curtain rail just goes back and it's just like five putties standing in your yeah, shower just beat the shit out of you while you're in the bathroom 
<laughs> See, so that's you can't how... even kick them because your trousers are around your ankles? Exactly. See, <laughs> that's, that's how you know these villains aren't trying because they never <laughs> tried to jump the Power Rangers while they were in the bathroom. <laughs> They're watching them 24-7. They could do it. <laughs> now, what do you think has more collateral damage, though? This fight or the small bill fight in Man of Steel? Mm, this is a smaller town, I think. So there's less to destroy. See, yeah. look, lots of buildings are still standing. Yeah. Yeah, Smurf got fucked up in that film because remember that that plane <laughs> that plane crashes down the main street and just like uh, obliterates everything. Oh, yeah. Whereas Goldar, when when he fell, he fell in the water just then, like on the edge of like the water. Remember when he smashes through that farm or whatever, and it just explodes like it's full of petrol? Dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. They in in Smallville they grow dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little known secret. No wonder Lionel Luther was buying property. <laughs> <laughs> These <are just> dynamite farms. <laughs> Free range dynamite. <laughs> the way Mama used to make. <laughs> it is sad though this movie because if the whole film was like this last third. It, it might have actually done well. It's true. I would have liked it more. And again, to bring back the Transformers comparison, this is basically what you get from the bulk of a Transformers movie. You'll get three fights like this throughout. Now, admittedly, that's one of the problems with the Transformers movie. They throw so much action with you at once, you're numb to it by the end. Mm. Uh, I mean, at least this movie of... doesn't have, like, Rita Repulsa with, like, two racist stereotype sidekicks. Uh, that's true. Again, we could have had Babu and Squat going around talking in jive. <laughs> that's the sequel. Shit, Rita, you look like hell, girl. <laughs> you need to level your pussy up. <laughs> Ru Ru RuPaul would have voiced one of them. No, no, just to make it, like, extra racist, they they're voiced by, like, the whitest actors, you know. Like Tom Kenny, <laughs> the voice of SpongeBob brings you racist character chair number 644. It's Tom Kenny and Hank Azaria. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hank Azaria's like, no, I had a talking to about this one. I'm going through sensitivity training, but here's a bunch of money. Oh, all right then. <laughs> he also has a live action role where he's playing an Indian guy in a quickie mart. Also, he literally that. just wears brown face for it. Yeah, see, now here's the good ham for just the, you know, laughing maniacally. Who was oh, the actor that was in um, Short Circuit? Oh, yeah, that guy who played an Indian but was super not Indian. <laughs> He's just a white dude. Just him and Hank Azaria as the two Indian stereotype like, sidekicks. Oh, like, in a new buddy cop movie. <laughs> yeah, and then you got, like, C. Thomas Howell playing his character from a fucking... Soul that... Man. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, the yeah. Movie. Yeah, Soul Man. <laughs> They, they, they all play buddy cops together in a brand new movie coming straight to the NRA network. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. in it as well. Oh, the... yeah, he's he's part of that club, too. It's a whole Avengers of white actors who probably shouldn't have done those <laughs> roles, looking back. I think Robert Downey Jr. is the only one, though, that gets a pass because it was on purpose. <laughs> was, yeah. And he got nominated for a fucking Oscar. <laughs> and he got nominated for an Oscar for it. Exactly. See, the Tropic Thunder was making a commentary on actors who go too far in their characters. Mm. Oh, we, we talked over it too, but Jason said we got to hold the line, and I'm like, ah, someone played a lot of Mass Effect. <laughs> which character? Which ending did he get? Which character dies? Oh, uh, uh, you know he got the bad ending. <laughs> <laughs> he was a renegade. Yeah, renegade for life. <laughs> Oh, now I'm getting flashbacks to Toy Story 3 there where they're all going into the incinerator. Because <laughs> that's basically what it is. Their Megazords are big toys getting pushed into the incinerator. But this is what Did you I ever see that this... YouTube video where it was um, some guy pranked his parents who watched Toy Story 3 for the first time and he edited the movie to end with them about to go into the incinerator and then just had the credits start to run? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> oh. oh. What, what I don't understand genius. about this, so like that hole had that, that that crystal at the bottom of it, the Zeo crystal. So like, why would pushing Power Rangers that, that are powered by the Zero crystal of the Warping Grid, like, stop them? Why would 
Why would that, like, burn them up? Beats me. It's also, not... the Megazord in this is ugly. That's another thing. Oh my thing. god, is it ever? Like, the original Megazord is one of the best designs ever. They really overthought this one. It just looks like, like I... Robot Golda. Yeah, I get you don't want it to look exactly like the original, but still, you, you designed a bad robot. Here's the thing. This giant robot, I can tell, was designed by Americans. Americans can't design good giant robots that aren't the Iron Giant. Or in Pacific Rim. Oh, well, I suppose Guillermo del Toro isn't American. He's no, not he's, entirely he's Mexican. Mexican. <laughs> yeah. You see, so obviously got... they should they should have gone to Mexico then for the design in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They should you have got outsourced it to, to Mexico. <laughs> Clearly, look, that's that's a job they can do. <laughs> oh Jesus! Designing all the giant robots again. This movie sponsored by NRA TV. So oh, sorry, we're too busy building the wall. Also, <laughs> yeah, really, to design good robots. <laughs> also, this Megazord, like, it's got like a huge defensive problem, whereas like the cap, that that capsules are in it. They're like they're like on the skin of it. <laughs> Yeah, unlike yeah. in the show when they were actively inside. I had the same problem though with the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie. Like in the original show, I'm pretty sure the um, in the bridge wasn't on the outside of the ship yeah, with an actual it window. It, yeah, it was it like it was a, a view screen. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a giant TV screen basically because they needed to use scanners and all that shit. You can't zoom in with a window. Oh no, they fell over and killed more Well, people. you whiffed that one, guys. It's your big moment, and you ruined it. Girls were watching. <laughs> I, again, here, talk about the Pacific Rim portion of the film. Now we all need to move as one. I mean, that's a pretty huge design flaw. Yeah. But this, this is the point where you just say, okay, the Red Ranger takes control at this point. point. He's the leader. Yeah, he controls everyone else everything in the robot. Yeah. Everyone else, like, you can man, like, lasers and rockets and shit that fire yeah. out the hands. Yeah, again, you can Star Trek it. Everyone's got one. They got their special weapon that they can work yeah. on. Does this thing even have a sword? I don't remember. I don't think it does. It oh, that's like, a way. Does it just, like... Oh, maybe. Beat maybe it's one of the things on its back. They've got a power and a force like you never seen before. Oh, no, serious, yeah. destroying towns. Mm. God damn it! I mean, it does just look marks. like a somehow worse version of Optimus Prime. <laughs> because yes. actors need, because actors need to emote, Matt. This needs to go on our demo reels for later. Oh yeah. Oh, and out of nowhere, the Megazor with a shattering German suplex! One, I mean, they've... two, three, he's fucking out! But they've ripped off enough from Marvel and stuff at this point, can't they just do the Iron Man Tony Stark, just helmet oh. cam thing? Yeah, that'd be nice. Oh, oh no, it's, it's two got... swords. It's got two swords. It's a dual wielder. Uh-huh. It, it uh, specked into that class. I am forted again. I'll tell you what, I know that the town's been destroyed, but if all that gold is just left around, <laughs> they're not going to worry. They can rebuild yeah. it as a fucking city. Maybe, they, yeah, that's how it becomes a city. <laughs> that's the sequel. They got city money. Mm. So we have more gold and, and than anywhere else on everyone Earth. Everyone that's left of the city, which is like three people, decided not to tell anyone about the giant robot fight. Just said, oh, we <laughs> just found it was gold in the middle of the city. Yeah. But, but what what happened to your city? It's all destroyed. Just, no, just, things got a bit rowdy last night. <laughs> and, and Rita just lords it over people. Look, I, I'm a job creator. Look how much money I brought into this small community. Please elect me for city council next year. I, I kept jobs in America. Yeah, with a giant alien monster. Talking of jobs, though, they could just sell all the gold to Apple for use in their iPhones and uh, shit. Uh, like, just become the richest city on Earth. America, I like it. Boo. Oh, I forgot that. They, like, hit her to the moon. Because oh, she... and all the gold just evaporated. Oh, that's a shame. They couldn't have left something for the town that they destroyed. 
Just, you know, really. Which, again, another thing they never answer in Power Rangers, how do the cities always manage to rebuild themselves after a big monster fight? Wasn't there, like, one series where, like, the Power Rangers were actually, like, like, city, like, like emergency responders or something yes quite a few actually in light speed rescue yeah they yeah. were like ambulance and police and firefighters all together yeah yeah they need to explain explain how the, the, they need like the power power rangers devastation fund like from batman white knight <laughs> yes exactly oh yeah who's getting rich every time the power rangers destroy a city who's getting the kickbacks and the construction contracts and everything what are the teamster unions looking like in this world I told you it'd be fancy. look you know i just don't support the power rangers industrial complex is all i'm saying Oh yeah, here here's our cameo coming up here. Oh, yeah. There they are, and look, they're wearing pink and green in case you didn't know. And that club was <laughs> on them for way too long. Yeah, you, you know how I know this movie wasn't going to be a failure when I saw this in the special advance screening with everyone who won tickets. I was the only one who went yay at that moment, and no one knew why I went yay <laughs> at that moment. And I'm like, yeah, this movie's going to fucking fail if you, you just all like, don't get yeah. it. You love random white people. Oh, <laughs> there he is. It's doing the Fortnite dance. <laughs> shucking and jiving, shucking and jiving. <laughs> Plus, who doesn't want a badass sword? That sword, though, legit looks like shit. Compared to, yeah. the, like, the original. Which was a cool-ass sword. Masters. I would have liked to have added one last line there. It's just like, hey, by the way, if you don't want to dive into the water each time, I can actually just teleport you guys here. Yeah, well, really, they never they explained that. that. This is like a video game. They haven't opened that, that, uh, that no, round no. yet. <laughs> they got to they got to put more money into the camp before they unlock fast travel. <laughs> You've got to go to the 17 cell towers across Angel Grove and climb them. <laughs> uh, but maybe the real Power Rangers were the friends we made along the way. I guess his mother's okay now. Yeah, she she's, she's she got, got better. better. Oh my maybe, my! maybe it's like in South Park how you can cure AIDS with money. Maybe <laughs> maybe in this, <laughs> whatever illness she's got is cured by gold. Yeah, really. Oh, oh my! My plot specific illness has gotten better. It's in remission. Just blend up some gold and inject it straight into the bloodstream. It should be fine. Also, I like uh, what is it? That uh, guy there, the Blue Ranger. He's totally just being Charlie from a. Uh... What is it? Always sunny. He's got a freaking cork board with string theory and everything going on. <laughs> yeah, he's wondering who the male goes to. <laughs> Pepe Sylvia. He'll figure that out. Who the, the fuck is Pepe Sylvia? <laughs> oh, there's the lightning bolts. Yay. So that was Power Rangers, and it wasn't as bad as i remember but it's not good either like it's no. just it's just kind of fun it's you know what it is it's the perfect movie to do a commentary on because i don't feel bad talking over it <laughs> it's one of those ones that you just like put in the background but yeah I, I hope everyone liked a chance getting to see us talk about this one again i know this has been on the docket forever for matt and myself and i'm even happier because tom got to join us for this one yeah Thank you for having me, seriously. Oh, always a pleasure. Any any closing thoughts, Tom, because you are our guest? Uh, closing thought? I don't know if I can be bothered to wait for the after credit sequence. Neither can I. Considering there's ten minutes of credits. I know. <laughs> also, I just realized the closing song here was I've Got the Power, which was a sample from a song that was on the soundtrack of the other Power Rangers movie. <laughs> See, I just remember it from uh, Bruce Almighty. That too, that's another good one. But yeah, so Power Rangers, everyone. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you knew nothing about Power Rangers, uh, if you stuck with it, good on you. I appreciate it. I know this is kind of niche. Uh, Matt and myself will be back next week. We'll be talking about Aquaman officially. We could have done it this week, but like I said, I thought this would be more fun to get one off the old uh, bucket list that I've been meaning to do. Also, hopefully by then we'll have seen just or, uh, Young Justice Season 3 as well. We haven't seen that yet, Matt or I, as we start this. Yes, and that's only because DC Universe isn't in any of our countries. 
Nope. So from the league of people the DC Universe thought weren't good enough <laughs> to get their app, we bid you adieu, everybody. Bye-bye. See ya.